hey guys so i did um a short story on youtube saying if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to talk on um leave a comment and i'll talk on those subjects right um somebody asked me my birthday so my birthday is the 26th of october this is the easy one so i'm getting it out of the way 26th of october um and i'm scorpio deacon one with heavy scorpio in my chart um so <laughs> that was for somebody asking my birthday and their name was eddie and they asked me without the year very um respectable <laughs> so yeah okay um i was going to start with um joseph bush i'm gonna get to you um you guys may have seen him he's become quite vocal on the community section which i love i love people's uh, opinions topics um, how they've grown and things like that but i'm actually going to start with a more recent comment um from uh i don't know what that says <laughs> q uh chick chicana q q chicana sd i'm going to start with your comment and you guys can check out the story and see the full comment but i'll read it to you now um in short um they put they followed uh politics closely and was involved for 20 years in their community they hated trump um but was triggered when they heard about um gates and they took to youtube and just basically found a spiritual path. They found tarot, um, looked into their life path, looked into Holly Weird and everything. Um, they asked, can I share my opinion or, pr or predict topics such as the 2020 elections, who Trump really is and does he mean us harm? Um, is the world ending or are we shifting to 5D? If 5D, do our children come with us? And what if I share custody? Um, the dad's not spiritual. And uh, so, you know, you're concerned and uh, rightly so, because it's a lot going on. Uh, I'm probably going to get flagged on YouTube for talking about um, Trump. But here we go. Um it's actually um, a British word for passing gas. <laughs> um, I Just like you, when I first got into looking things up and researching, uh, especially on YouTube, what we're doing on YouTube, and I think you may have heard me speak about this before, we're remembering other people's facts rather than um, learning to think for ourselves. So when I first started out, same as you, I think a lot of people start at uh, Holly Weird, right? Um, and those sort of things. And uh, okay, this singer must be a devil wish because they've got lots of money coming to them. And, you know, they're doing these huge things on these stages, making it clear for everybody to see. And again, one of the things that I always say, be careful of your words because your word is your wand and a miss uh, interpreted and miss said phrase is money is the root of all evil It's we're saying it wrong. First of all, we're quoting it wrong and that can block money and success coming to you because that was another question as well. Um, but once I got deeper into my spirituality and what it means to me and um, what it means to you, where you're at, it's completely fine. You're on this stage of growth and things like that. But in my view, my opinion, um, people like Trump, uh, who did we have, like Saddam Hussein, um, the Clintons and things like this, um, if we was to look at it in a different perspective, rather than looking at them as like, oh, they're pure evil and devil worshippers and things like that. What if we was to look at it, and that's what my channel's about, um, getting you to think for yourself, not remember somebody else's thoughts and facts. Um, if you was to think or look at this from a different point of view, 
and side note, even after you've looked at it from a different point of view, you and you still remain with the same opinion, that's wonderful, right? Um, that's what I want you guys to look at all the facts and think for yourself. So if you was to look at this from a different point of view and look at uh, Trump as we're using an, as an example, that they could be a very high spiritual being, okay, before they came here. And they came here to, let's say, trigger a lot of people, as you use the word trigger. Um, they came here to trigger a lot of people into waking up. But just remember, he could be um, on his life mission, asleep as well. Um, and he's doing what he came here to do, wake a lot of people up, trigger a lot of people. Um, another one that I use is, as an example is um, a lady who her son was killed um, in a sundown town. Um, I was dragged and that and he was falsely accused and he was murdered. But this woman then went on to change so many laws, so many points of view, so many people's hearts and made a big impact on the world. So sometimes when something looks negative, like a tower moment, um, again, relating it back to things to do with the channel and tarot and things, um, a, ta a, a tower moment is usually conceived as or seen as bad in the beginning. But once we've worked through it and healed whatever it triggered and trauma and things within us, um, it can be such a blessing, right? So um, if we was to look at Trump and say, look what the hell he's doing, he's crazy, look at all these things he's saying, um, you know, look what he's doing, he's pure evil. To look at it from a spiritual point of view, what we're, you're asking in regards to moving to 5D and things like that, um, we could look at him like a very high spiritual being who's job is to remain asleep but trigger masses to wake up right and then we could say well trump's doing a great job <laughs> but i hope you get what i mean by that and asking about your children um i'm guessing they're pretty young um your children and you are concerned that are they going to come with me you know let me explain it like this as a parent myself i'm a grandmother so you know my children are older and grown and have children of their own what you learn as a parent is you've got to learn to allow them to have their own path because you can have no control of it this will bring a lot more ease to you i'm telling you um i was like a helicopter parent and trying to um get them to do what I felt was safe for them, what I thought was best for them. But we're born individually. Our children are our soulmates. Um, the people we meet are our soulmates and soul family. Um, so we agreed to come together, but we do have our own individual path and our children are individuals, right? So I don't think you should be concerned whether your children uh, will shift to 5D with you. I feel like... Um, incorporating is the world ending no i don't think it is um we're in the age of aquarius so we're moving out of the dark ages for sure so that is what's ending that cycle we go through different cycles of time where we're in the age of enlightenment and then we're in the bronze age silver age gold age and you know, things like that. So we're, we were in the dark ages. Now we're moving back up the cycle. Um, so we're going to move into like the bronze ages again and things like that out of the dark ages. So all of us will be moving with that shift. Um, you can see it now. There's like mass awakenings. And like I said, could be triggered by somebody we all view as a tower, right? All view as a negative. Um, and it was meant to happen that way so that, well, I believe or feel at this moment in my spiritual awakening. And like I said, I've been through all those other things that you have and um, found my way up like that. Um, 
you know, of all these different situations and remaining in that negative way of viewing things. Um, it's keeping that negativity in the world, whether you like it or not. It's, you know, like if you say, you know, somebody did something bad to me and I'm wishing something on them. It's like this, all this negative negativity bouncing around the world rather than saying, you know what, it's gone, you know, let it go and things like that. So if we continue to say view um, Trump as a negative rather than just like, and I'm talking on a spiritual level here, okay, people, I'm talking on a spiritual level, that if we look at it from a different point of view that, okay, maybe he was sent here to wake us all up. All these people who are in power are, and, you know, are doing negative things or whatever um, is your opinion, they could be here for a reason, like everything else that you um, understand is happening for a reason. Okay, so for, don't worry about um, your children's path. They're going to find their way. They're going to be in a much more enlightened time than us um, that, that we've been living in so far. We're sort of in the crossover and we're feeling this major shift and it can feel like the world's ending, right? Because it is closing down of a cycle, but the world in itself is not ending. Um, we're shifting, right? And I remember when we first started to shift to 5D, um, I would have a lot of crazy dreams and things like, and I'd be like, I dreamt this. And I remember one lady, she pointed out to me and she said, oh, it's the story about being in a whale. And I was like, oh, yeah, and I, like it took somebody else or me saying it out loud to recognize it. So we do go through all these different stages and your children will go with you. And maybe their dad not being so spiritual and you being spiritual, that's giving them the best of both worlds. If we look at it like that, I have three children and um, I've always give them the opportunity to choose their own faith if you like i've never forced it on them um they went to arabic school when they was children <laughs> so they could learn about so they could learn to read the quran um they can read the bible you know i gave them the tools to be able to choose for themselves and you know it's also a great life skill right to know other languages all these things that I didn't do and didn't have the opportunities to do. So, um, they, because I'm quite vocal as well about my beliefs. So you might have heard me say, I sit down with my kids and we have these great conversations where they'll put in each of their beliefs. Like I've read a lot of the religious texts and I've read a lot of spirituality. I've read a lot of conspiracy theories and I've come to the conclusion because I was searching for answers not to remember other people's facts, to take other people's opinions maybe and, you know, put them all together and see how it's working for you. Learn to think for yourself, basically. Um, you said you, uh, 5D numerology, master number star seeds, uh, and how to find your life purpose. Um, I know this is a long question, guys. Thank you for bearing with us. I will do the other questions as well. Um, so how to find your life purpose. I've done a video on this on YouTube as well. I have a self-help section. So if you go to my channel and then go to playlists, I've named it self-help, help yourself, right? So what's our life purpose? How do we find our life purpose? Because we start to think, ooh, what is my life purpose? You know, it must have been it's something um, great and I'm... I missed my calling to be a priest or a nun or whatever, you know. Um, damn it, I've already done it sort of thing. It's it's not something major like that. I explain it as your life calling is different at moments in time. So at one time, your life calling was to be a daughter. At another time, your life calling was to be a friend. Another time, it was to be a mother um, so what you're most passionate about right now, um, that's 
your life path. You're never going to miss your life path or things like that. It's not something you have to go seeking for and you feel like it's evading you and things like that. No, um, it's something you're most passionate about. You're always drawn to. You always want to do, and you know, it comes effortlessly, you know. So, yeah, okay, we'll move on. Um, so, somebody's question was no disrespect. I want to kiss your whole face. <laughs> okay, I don't know the question in that. Um, somebody's question was how do I get a personal reading? I say it in every video. Go to the description boxes, you'll find um, my email to contact me um do you believe in karmic debt um and that's din hein yes i do believe in karmic debt do you think the betrayer will get their karma so this is a lot that comes up on the channel right you you guys feel that somebody owes you somebody betrayed you so they owe you some karmic debt this is where we get karma confused. Um, if they betray you in this lifetime, I don't believe they're going to get their karma in this lifetime. They're already dealing with their past karma. And think about it from another perspective, another point of view. It could be your karma that you're paying for, right? You may feel like, well, they betrayed me, but you might have betrayed them in a the last life. It's all about perspective. But I do believe in karmic debt um talk about karma this is tc talk about karma and how long does it last talk about fear and destiny um i guess we're kind of doing that how long does karma last um until it's played out right maybe it was in that moment that person could leave in a relationship and you feel triggered and hurt and things like that um, it'll be different to each individual situation. How are you so beautiful and smart? Um, I've been through a lot of life things. <laughs> um, new connections. Talk about new connections. A few people put this. Talk about new connections. Um both general and love thanks. I think you guys kind of meant you wanted me to post some new connection videos or want me to talk about in the readings um, new connections, right? Uh, I talk about what comes up in the general energy. I have no control over that. I'm the messenger. I don't even remember the messages. People always say to me, oh, did you see this in the video? It was so funny. I was like, what? The video was funny? I don't remember. I'm just like a channel that the messages come through. But I want to talk about um, getting into new love connections. Um, and what we should look out for, right? Um, when we're getting into love connections and we've been through some trauma and we've been through some healing and we feel ready to enter into a new relationship and when this new connection comes towards us um we kind of feel like wow i'm ready for marriage i'm ready for long term i'm no no more games for me i, I want the one i want every, you know those sort of things i want some i want something real we forget to be at the beginning of a relationship and have all these exciting times and just enjoy each other that's the best part of the relationship and that's what we end up starting to miss later on in the con in the connection stop trying to jump from you know a meeting somebody to z we're married with 20 kids and you know got trouble and stuff stop trying to get straight to the end point where okay you know we're married now you want to meet somebody, miss them, that excitement of, oh my God, I just got a text from that guy who I was telling you about with your friend. I don't have any friends, but you know, <laughs> that guy I was telling you about just messaged me and it lights up your whole day and it changes your mood. And I'm going to go see him in a bit. We're going for a coffee or a drink, whatever it is. Don't forget to that. And then let's say you've had this coffee and a drink and you go back home from each other and you're really excited about the day and then that person doesn't text you the next day 
immediately if you're feeling triggered, right? Oh my God, he's with somebody else. She's with somebody else. I can't believe it. I knew it. Shake my head on Facebook. I knew it. Every man's the same. Every woman's the same. No, stop. Be accountable for yourself. You're feeling that. That person didn't say that to you. That person didn't do that to you. They may be busy and have a different life. Maybe you haven't got to that conversation yet where, okay, I have to go shopping every Tuesday for my sick auntie. And you're like, nope, my intuition told me because I've healed now and I found my intuition. My intuition told me that you was cheating on me. I want to warn you about be careful in new connections in saying your intuition is telling you something about that person rather than recognizing and being triggered. I hope you guys understand what I mean by that. Recognize, okay, this person's triggering me and you can stop and ask yourself, um, okay, what is it that's triggering me about this person just not talking to me right now? Okay, maybe in your past relationship, the person was ignoring you when they was cheating. Okay, that's what's triggering me. Okay, maybe you was ignored as a child because you came from a large family. And you can say, okay, this is childhood trauma. It needs healing within me. I need to work it out and sit with those things myself and understand that that person's not doing anything. That person's not responsible for how I'm feeling or my happiness. I am. Right. So we can take it back and just be like, OK, I need to look at that. This person is a soulmate coming into my life. They are doing so for a reason and they're triggering this feeling within me. So, OK, this feeling needs to be looked at. I'm not going to straight away text like, oh, OK, with your other girlfriend, are you? Because you start to look crazy to this person who is a whole person. Right. They might already be a whole person and think. What are you talking about? I have other things going on in my life and I just met you. What are you talking about? I do like you. Yeah, yeah. You said you like me, but you didn't text me back. I'm just, I'm making light of the situation, but I really want to speak on this to be able to help you. It's something that's within us. And if we be accountable for our own feelings, accountable for our own happiness, we can go a long way and you'll end up in that happier relationship a lot quicker. And I will try to post some singles. Just remember to like them, share them because they don't really get the views. Even though 90% of probably 99% of my viewers are single, you don't see yourself that way because you have these soulmate attachments. So I do put a lot of videos out and a lot of energy into them. Um, and they don't really get the views. So I'm saying to you guys, go ahead and, um, you know, share the videos to make sure they get the views. And please remember to subscribe. So let's go to um, Joseph. Somebody quickly asked me as well, um, Jeffrey Wilkerson. Asked me, do I know Namior or Kyo? Only from Tina Turner's movie. Right. Um, I seen it there. I think that was probably did it come out about 30 years ago? I seen it on that about 30 years ago and that it really helped her. Um, so thank you for that. I will look into it more myself personally now. But I remember that it stuck out from the movie. But I'm going to Joseph Bush now. And Joseph asked me to speak on my thoughts on twin souls, soulmates, soul contracts. Um, if any of you are still here, <laughs> um, twin flames, soulmates and soul contracts. Well, you just heard me say soulmates are multiple people in our life. Um, I call you guys my soul family all the time because you've taught me things. I feel I'm here to teach you things. Hope I do. I'll open your mind at least. And that's what a soulmate is. Um, we're here to trigger each other. So if you've looked on this video and you thought this biatch, 
She annoys me. I'm your soulmate, honey. I'm here to trigger you. What annoys you about me? Just look at it. Like I was saying, look within. Um, so twin flames. Um, I think the tarot community has definitely butchered this word. I'm part of it too, but I think we've butchered this word and the meaning and the understanding of it. So now everybody believes, okay, my twin flame. I do actually believe we're all made in twos and that there is a t your twin flame out there, but you've got to reach a certain level of ascension that then the soul splits into two and becomes this mirrored soul twin flame whatever you want to call it i think it was um i posted something it was probably maybe a year ago i always say the other day but it could be a year ago um i think it was plato on twin flames um i'll try and search it again and look it up for you guys but for me um i think a lot of people are having karmic relationships and they're thinking or believing their twin flame relationships um the way again i want you guys to look at this is to ground yourself grounding yourself means get out in nature sit on the grass take your shoes off and really talk to yourself truthfully and honestly um do you do you believe this is a twin flame connect connection do you believe um that you've reached that level of ascension um, before you came here so you've already started off and you're already like um you know empath or something with a very high spiritual calling i feel like probably donald trump has a twin flame it's not funny but yeah if you can you know bring it from the front of the video to bring it full circle that somebody that is making a high impact are you waking a lot of people up on your journey um you know be honest with yourself so you don't get caught in these traps of saying okay this is my twin flame i have to stay with them and wait for them and waste my life for them i'm sat at home and i'm waiting for my twin flame and things like that it's not what it's about um it's usually two people who have had you know sort of a mirrored life same sort of traumas pains experiences in their life and they come together um i describe it as i personally say like you can sort of refuel each other um and i don't agree with a lot of readers when they're saying just send happy thoughts and love um to your twin flame i feel like you could just be fueling them and then you can stay in separation um so i think you can come together until the healing is complete a lot of people think you're going to come together and stay together forever if you're on a real twin flame journey it's often not the case that you come together and stay together forever you're working through these traumas these healings and you're supposed to be bringing healing to the world and this having input on the world and it's not really even all about that love it's about raising the vibrations of the world and that you know to help us shift into um you know the next stage away from the dark ages again incorporating the rest of the stuff into the video is to help the shifting of the world so and i often describe it in my videos as a little tongue-in-cheek it's um you know the carrot the love is the carrot that's dangled in front of your face because you've experienced this love and um experience together and you think wow you know so you end up chasing this love but you should be still trying to put the good out there or put service out there to humanity so if you're sat at home and this thing is really making you feel down it's not really kickstarting any major changes in you it's just hurting you i wouldn't say it's a twin flame connection more like a karmic connection and i actually believe um that it may be that what's that film called that will smith film where they're both superheroes and when they come together they're weaker 
Um, and I think a lot of people are like, well, when you're together, you're absolutely stronger and you're forced to be reckoned with in a power couple and all these great shiny things. And to me, I'm saying that's the carrot being dangled in front of your face. If you are not actually making any movement, the carrot's not really doing its job, is it, sort of thing. You're not um, progressing. You're not actually ascending. You're not actually moving. And I'd love to even go back to the first question that I did was that was quite long. What was she called? Q Ch Chicana, Q Chicana, something like that. Um, that when we're evolving and ascending, we actually move out of this. Um, we understand that we're not supposed to be. How can I say it? We're not supposed to be really overly concerned with attachments, right? If you're that ascended that you have, um, you know, a twin flame, we're not overly concerned with attachments in this world because we know and understand we're all one. We're never actually in separation. And the main focus of twin flames in tarot is twin flames in separations and when you'll get back together but that is a sort of loving somebody with the condition that they're with you and we want to learn to love unconditionally knowing that we're never in separation we're all as one and the energy is sort of flowing through us all that's my belief soul contracts can be the same as like um karma we agreed before coming here um that this is what we'll do it's got to be completed by this time etc so like when we're saying everything happens for a reason sort of thing we're sort of referring to the soul contracts where you know it had to happen it's like a higher self is trying to tell uh conscious self it had to happen at some point because you agreed this would happen you would feel this hurt that person would feel that let's just say a third party situation um with romantic third party situation that you know two lovers and somebody else has interjected and broke you up this could be a, a, all of your soul contract and you agreed i owed you karma you're the one who's going to you know be hurt this time so all three of you and when you can look at that third party, not as, oh, he stepped into my marriage or she stepped into my marriage. When you are actually like, okay, it was all three of our soul contracts to for this to happen. So we all got sparked into healing. We were all on this journey together. That's sort of that level of ascension that you're reaching for that you can say Trump's living his life path. My That lady who you know, stole my boyfriend, is leading her life path and not let it drag you down. That's the sort of place that you're heading for or wanting to head for. You know, not judging from your own perspective. And I want to say not to be judgmental, but um, I guess it kind of it even kind of is like that we want to reach a place where we're not being judgmental on other people like i was the same saying look i've looked at holly weird i've looked at this and i was screaming from the rooftops i'm awake i'm awake and was trying to wake people up that way i don't think it's very effective i think it's very draining to your energy following your soul contracts no matter how individual it is to you is actually doing a lot for the world and waking up learning what you're supposed to learn in that moment um via that soul contract meeting somebody hurting somebody maybe you've broke somebody's heart or you know you went into their life made a very big impact on their life you agreed to that with a soul contract um you agreed that it would happen at this stage in your life when this was going on so you might say you know what this guy left me at the worst time in my life but it's going to make those big changes right it started it happened the cold the contract was completed 
and then maybe they've left your life and don't need to return to your life because you agreed to this. But maybe once you've completed your soul contract, you both heal and then you can choose whether, OK, we have free will. Do we still want to be with each other now? Right. Maybe they have a soul contract with somebody else or it's all intertwining, like I said, with a third party situation. Um, yeah, was it Hancock was the movie that I was thinking of um, with Will Smith, where these superheroes, there was made in pairs. And when they come together, they're actually weaker the, because they're just like the connection. It's very strong and you're absolutely in love and blah, 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 blah. And you're not actually doing anything else for humanity, but separated. Your powers are extremely strong and you're these superheroes that can help the world right and like i said these are just my opinions opinions ain't facts take them in let them go guys and grow learn to think and grow that's it good luck guys